Hello and welcome to HMS Belfast. My name's Andy and I'm the conservation manager for the ship. At the moment we're still on the forecastle of the ship. Behind me is A turret and up to my left behind it is B turret, the two forward six inch turrets. HMS Belfast was built by Harland and Wolf. She was first laid down in 1936 and launched in 1938. During her time in the Navy, she went through a major rebuild, a major modernisation and several refits, culminating in 1959 until the end of her naval life in 1964. So now we're going to go up to the gun direction platform and look at the director for the primary armament six inch guns. We have just come up from the forecastle and we're now on the gun direction platform, or GDP as it was known. My name is Fred Sutton. I'm a volunteer on board HMS Belfast doing conservation. I also joined the Navy when I was 15 and became an ordnance artificer on board various ships. The only original bit of kit on board the gun direction platform from the first build is the gun director behind me, which is up there. This was installed during the manufacture, but she had an optical site on there, which was a 20 foot optical platform with a binocular in each end. During the refit after the mining of Belfast in Devonport, that was taken off and the radar was put on there. One of the first ships in the Navy to get a radar. Up in the, the director, you would have had a, about nine people up there. Their job was to find the enemy, hold it, and that would become the line of sight for the guns. To make it easier, we keep the angle at one end at 90 degrees and only let the other end do the squinting. Watch T approach and the line converging. The gunnery officer would also observe the enemy ship and try to decide how fast it was going from its bow wave. He would also try and estimate the inclination from how it is bearing to us. That information would be sent down to the transmitting station where the system worked out what angle they needed to go for the guns. The way the Navy used to do it was they would take the range and take off 200 yards and fire the first shot. They would then immediately fire the second shot but they would put the range up 400 yards and then they would come back 200 yards to fire the third shot. And so the third shot should land on the ship. Once you see a straddle, then the gunnery officer would say, fire for effect. So you just keep firing then. So it was an iterative process, but I think really quite efficient. We've now moved down from the gun direction platform, which is on 04 deck, to the transmitting station, which is on four deck. This is the brains of the gunnery system. We've got the Admiralty Fire Control table here, which is the original one which was installed as the ship was being built in 1938. So it solves the problem of where to aim the guns, both in training and elevation. It would have been manned by the Royal Marines and as action stations closed up, they would come in here, there would be a gunnery officer there who would be in charge, and they would start setting on information. You've got two dials here, own ship and enemy ships. All the own ship information would have been on, put on right away. The engine room would be given speed, and that would be sent down here. Then the information would come down from the director. Line of sight, so the bearing, the speed estimated by the gunnery officer, but we also have to have barometric information. What the air temperature is, what the air pressure is, how old the guns are. Once you've got all the information ready, the order would go from the bridge to shoot. It would be very quiet in here, everybody would be doing their job, and the guns crew would be working like mad to keep the guns firing. For me, this is the most amazing compartment on the whole ship and this is the most amazing piece of kit. It's the brains of the guns and when I started doing conservation on here Andy Curran asked me to have a look inside it so I took a few cover plates off and looked inside and it is 
basically pristine. I couldn't see any problems with it at all. So now we've done the brains, we're now moving over to A turret where the punch comes from. We're nested in A turret on HMS Belfast. This is the foremost turret of the four six inch turrets fitted to the ship. Each gun is capable of firing eight rounds per minute to a range of about 14 miles. The warheads are 112 pounds and they are fired using a 30 pound cordite charge. So in this turret, there are three guns, each with a crew of seven people. There's the captain of the turret who sits at the back with his own communication number and a layer trainer and setter in a small compartment on the far side of the turret there. So there's 26 people in here. So drills are very important. These guys spend a lot of time training so that each knows their own job, knows where to be and are able to keep up this high rate of fire. We'll now have a look at how the guns actually were set and fired. Right, what we have here then is the elevating position for this right hand gun. The transmitting station have set the angle that's required and the uh, say that the gunner here ju literally just lines up the gun so that the arrows are lined up and that gun is in position ready to fire. Each gun has its own hoist for shells and hoist for cordite. So during the loading, the breech is open, the shells come sliding down these chutes here into the loading tray, ready for loading the gun. Two loaders push a shell right up into the gun and that's followed by cordite, 30 pounds of it. It comes up via a cordite hoist in these Clarkson tubes and each charge looks like this and that is pushed up behind the shell in the gun itself. Following that, the breech is closed and a vent tube is fitted into the small breech here and that fires a flame up through the breech and sets off the cordite in the breech itself. Well, when I went on board HMS Belfast, a brand new ship, I didn't know what to expect. I only come from a small cruiser and there was this beautiful big cruiser, brand new. Then I was informed that I was put in charge of A and B turrets. Your responsibility is to maintain those guns to fighting efficiency should they be required. So you do a shoot. The noise that down below there for the first experience was quite surprising. You couldn't feel any shock, no compression. It was just a thud, thud, dump, rumble, shudder, and your, your feet went. You didn't know whether that was the turret revolving or whether the ship was heaving and whatnot. Now we've come down to A turret shell room. This is home for 600 shells, that's 200 per gun. And they were stored in the bunkers around us with a ready use supply sat on this carousel. The carousel had an independent motor so it could slowly rotate to make sure that the guys loading the shell hoist had uh, a shelter hand. Where I'm stood here, rotated with the turret, uh, pointed in the same direction. The crew of nine down here would have been responsible for breaking the shells out of the bulk storages, fitting the fuses and sending the shells up to the turrets via the shell hoist. These are the shell hoists themselves. They're driven by hydraulic motors from a power plant just below the turret. The shells are slotted into them and taken straight up to the turret themselves. Below here is the powder magazine, which has a similar setup and three more hoists, which are seen over the back here, and they take the powder charges straight up through those hoists into the turret. The machinery really you see around us here was the originals of the ship and really didn't change at all over the whole life of the ship. So we've looked at the uh, main armament, the six inch armament for the ship, over 200 people working together to keep four turrets working and 12 guns firing. 
all in constant communication over eight decks. So now we're going to go and look at the four inch up secondary armament. We are now stood beside a four inch gun mount when a four fitted to the ship. These are quick firing mounts and they could be used for anti-aircraft and surface mode. They can fire shells to about 39,000 feet or about 12 and a half miles in the surface mode. They're crewed by 15 gunners and in their semi-automatic mode can fire 20 rounds per minute per gun. Originally there were six of these mounts fitted to the ship. In 1944 the two after ones were removed to reduce top weight while 20 mil automatic weapons were fitted to the upper deck. You can hear noise going on in the background. Conservation is constantly going on on HMS Belfast and at the moment we're repairing the upper decks. On the gun mount itself we have positions for a layer and a trainer who operated the uh, training angle for the gun and the elevation angle for the barrels. The bulk of the crew spent their time loading. Ammunition was supplied from the 4-inch magazine on 5-deck via hoist and a conveyor belt system to keep resupply to the gun mounts themselves. In the front here, there's a fuser unit. These became redundant once proximity shells started to be used in the fleet, but were left on the mounts to counterweight and balance the mount itself. These gun mounts were directed by radar control directors fitted on the deck above. The signals came down very similar to the six inch armament where the layer and trainer would follow arrows to direct the guns. We're now on the boat deck of HMS Belfast. Early in the ship's life, this was in fact the flight deck. Behind me, there would have been two hangars to house the two walrus aircraft that the ship carried. Over here, there was a catapult to launch the aircraft and the ship carried, at the time, two cranes for retrieving the aircraft when they landed in the water alongside. They're primarily used for reconnaissance, but could also be armed with depth charges and bombs. After the refit, the modernisation refit of 1959, this became the boat deck and all traces of the aircraft were removed, except for these hard standings on which the rails ran. Obviously, Belfast armament changed over the years. Um, yep. did you, do you notice the changes now with the ship from, from what it was in your day? Yes, turrets are still the same, but in midship there is no catapult. There are, there are only two anti-aircraft guns, whereas before there were six, three aside. The fuse trains have, have gone, which were midships, and also they've got antenna up there for detection work, which we didn't have at all. There was no such thing as radar in those days. If you could see it, you hit it. If you couldn't see it, it wasn't there. Those are all the modern equipments on the Belfast, which in some ways I wish we'd had, but uh, well, that's the way it goes. And I was also going to ask you about the, the, the paint scheme that's on the ship. Was it different again? In your oh, day? yes, it was just grey. It was just grey. There was no camouflaging on the Belfast at the first. Remember, we left Portsmouth for a shakedown cruise. I finished up being mined. We never went back. Now there again, that's the luck of the ship. Still afloat. Welding. Great, great believer in welding. HMS Belfast had its final refit in 1959 when she was modernised before rejoining the Far East fleet. She was paid off into reserve in 1964 and became a museum here on the Thames in 1971. And this is what you can see here today. <laughs>